So the two most uh, missed questions uh, were number 34 and 38. So let's go over 38 now. And what we have here is uh, these tile objects. And uh, they're in a class called tile bag. Tile bag is represented by a list of tiles and uh, called tiles. And then we have uh, int size. Right? And size is the size or number of tiles that are in the bag or not in the bag, but not yet used tiles. Right? Size is the number of not yet used tiles. So apparently this is part of a game. And in this game, we are using tiles that are in the tile bag. Okay, so we have the constructor. Obviously, the constructor fills tiles with tile objects, and then size is initialized to the size of the bag. And if we look at this picture here, um, this would be the uh, tiles array, uh, array list, and it would be initialized to these letters, let's say. And if it was, then the size would be initialized to 10 because we're starting at 0 up to 9. It's 10 elements. Um, okay. And they introduced just one method. It's called get new tile. Okay. So what does get new tile do? If size is 0, it's null. Okay, great. And uh, it sets index to a random number. Right. So math.random gives you 0 to 0 0.999 uh, times size. So on the low end, this would be 0 times size, which is 0. And on the high end, it'd be 0 0.9999 times size, which would be 0 0.999 times 10. And that would give you 9.9999. We intify that, truncating the decimal places. And so index is a random number from 0 to 9. Right? So 0 to 9. Um, let's assume that the random number 3 was generated here. So index is equal to 3. And size is decremented to 9. Okay, so let's come over here. Size is now equal to 9. And then uh, we hold a uh, tile at get index. And index is the random 3 in this temp variable. So let me go ahead and draw that. Oh, man. So let me go ahead and draw that right here. This would be temp. And temp would be equal to the C object, right? Oh, I'm sorry. The D object. OK. So the index of 3. OK. And then we're swapping. And we went over the swap algorithm here, right? And A, um, th the choice was between A and B. Um, but on closer inspection, A doesn't work because A overwrites um, the size with temp, right? So size is 10. This, oh, I'm sorry, size is 9. So it overwrites this guy here with temp, which is sub 3. So it puts the D tile into element 9. So this is no longer a J, but a D. And then it takes the index, the C, uh, the D, and it puts uh, tiles dot get size, which is nine, into element three. And you would think it takes J and puts it into over D, right? But we already went and put three into nine first, so it would take the D again, which is el in element nine, in element size, and it would put it here in element three. So there'd be a D here, and there'd be a D here. All right, that's not correct. The order is wrong, right? So part D, the order is correct because we saved index, which is 3. We saved D and temp. So that means we need to overwrite element 3 first, right? So that's what part B does. It overwrites element index, which is 3, with si tile size, which is 9, because it's been decremented from 10 to 9. And so the J goes to the D. And then the second part, the size, which is 9, this element here, j, is equal to temp, and then we put the d into size, into element 9. So, um, just a heads up, like with questions like this, uh, I wouldn't be able to solve it, like, in a, you know, normal amount of time without drawing it out. So, I highly recommend if you guys aren't able to do that, which I would say a good percent of you guys are not, there are people who can, but the majority are not. Um, draw these things out okay 
Um, okay, so anyways, that's what swap does, right? So it swaps it out and then returns temp. And what is temp? It's D, right? So D gets changed to J, and J gets changed to D. Um, and then D is returned. Okay, well, great. So it used one tile, right? But get new tile is going to be part of like a bigger program where it's probably going to be inside of a for loop, right? That's probably going to be um, based on the size of this array. So because that's the case, um, let's say we run get tile again, right? Well, we run get tile again. Size is equal to zero. It's equal to nine when it was equal to 10 the last time we called get tile, right? And so we come here and it gets a random number from zero to eight because size is nine. Index is a random number from zero to eight. Size is decremented to from nine to eight, right? And so you rerun it again and size is decremented from seven to, s uh, I'm sorry, eight to seven. Right? And then it's decorated from 7 to 6 and so on until size is 0 and there's no more new tiles to get. Right? And that's the way this kind of game works. Right? So what does size tell us? Right? Well, let's go ahead and go through, um, oh, just to be clear, size is the number of not yet used tiles. Okay? The ones that are left there that haven't been used yet. So um, we come over here and we say what's true about the algorithm. The algorithm allows the program to keep track of both used and unused tiles. Um, yes, that's true, right? Because uh, notice that size is going to be equal to 9 when we first start out. Oh, I'm sorry, it's equal to 10 when we first start out. That means all the tiles have been unused. And then it gets decremented to 9 which means there are nine tiles that have not been used yet, eight through elements eight through element uh, zero to eight, right? This one has been used, the three, right? Remember this D was held in temp, and temp is returned right here, right? So it's been used, and we throw, it, throw him off to the side, right? We put him on the end, and then we run it again, a random number, like say two, element two is generated, and then we swap two and size minus one, which is eight. Right? So C gets placed over here in 8, I gets placed over here in 2, size is now 8, and the C and the D have been used. They're, they're off on the side. We run it again. A random number 1 is generated, so we get the B, and we swap it with B, the 1 element, with size minus 1, which is 8. Minus 1 is 7. Right? Swap those two out, so H moves to 2, C moves to 7. These guys here on the end represent the used tiles. These guys here represent the unused tiles. Right? So the algorithm allows the program to keep track of both used, right? those are the ones on the end, to the right of size, and unused, to the left of size. Right? So that's true. And then we're looking at some of the others. Uh, the tile list becomes one element shorter when new tile gets executed. Well, did the tile list get shorter? No, it's still 10 elements long. It's just that the size is moving to the left, right? Every iteration, every time get new tile is run. So the size does not change. The algorithm selects a random tile from all the tiles in the list. No, not all the tiles, all the unused tiles, right? Because it's zero to size minus one, and size is decrementing every time you call get tile. So these unused tiles is what are getting randomly selected, right? not the used tiles. So C is not right. D, the tile list says used tiles in the beginning and unused tiles at the end. That's not true. These guys are the used tiles here, right? These are the ones that temp is returning because they're getting they're being used and they're being placed on the end. Used, unused, right? And then tile list only contain contains tiles that have not been used. That's true b before you run get tile. That's true. But after you run get tile, well, then it has a, like a, uh, you know, like it has uh, used tiles and unused tiles. And then if you run get tile 10 times, then they're all used. So E is not always true. So the correct answer is A. And again, with these kinds of problems, there's no shame in drawing it out, man. Like, for the majority of us, we have to, given the time constraint. Okay? I mean, you could sit there and think about this and, like, 
you know, really ponder it and have this mental model working in your head after maybe, let's say, 15 minutes, right? But uh, because of the time constraints, man, we got to draw this guy out to understand it and quickly, right? Um, so that is number 38.